Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. Listen, it's the international break. The transfer window's shut. Everton haven't been very good so far. So me and Jack thought we'd just have a little chat about possible free agents that Everton could bring in because we still, we still feel like we're a player or two short in the squad. Uh, with the window closing on Friday. Obviously, Everton did bring two players in on deadline day. Oral Mangala and Armando Breuer. We wanted a fast winger. We didn't get one. Um, and many of you wanted another defender. And we didn't get that either. Um, Jack, there isn't much going on. So, obviously, we are creating a bit of content to, yeah. to tie us over a little bit. Um, there is free agents out there. We know that, realistically, Everton probably aren't going to do any business with the free agents. No. We missed Hamas Rodriguez the other day. So, um, no, there is free agents out there. Andre Gomez is still free, by the way. We don't believe Everton are going to move in the free agent market. The only one they may well sign is Delhi, who was already there. Um, so we just thought we'd have a chat and see whether there's any of that, the list that we've got, say the 11 or 12 that we've got, who... Everton could bring in and it may make a little bit of sense to bring in. So that's where we are. Yeah, and it's been a big talking point the last few days actually sort of the free agent market because there mm. are a lot of decent players on there. There's big name players who, you know, have a big reputation and have played mm. at a very high level. And then there's useful players on there, players you look at and go, okay, well, you know, we can play a few positions. Mm. He's useful. He'd be a good fit for this team who needs a player in this position. And, you know, mm. there's one in particular that we want to have a look at who we think could address a real problem area for us, mm. isn't there? Andre Gomez, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, there is. There is, obviously. Uh, Carl Jenkinson is free. He's not the player we're talking about, but no. he's free. Former West Ham Arsenal Swansea, was he? He's played a few oh, games. <laughs> Definitely played for West Ham and Arsenal. Yeah. Um, the player we are going to look at is Brandon Williams, who is, uh, let's have a look at his just basic stats here, 24 years of age, position, he played left back, right back, he's played 98 career games, he's got three goals, and of course his fee is zero, because he is without a club, he left Manchester United officially in the summer, being at Norwich and Ipswich on loan, um, Predominantly played most of them games at left back rather than right back. And the reason why he come up is because a lot of people are looking for cover for Michalenko. Um, Everton have had problems on both sides, really. Uh, obviously, if Michalenko gets injured, Ashley Young is his replacement, who's obviously 40 this season. We've also had issues at right back, haven't we? You know, Roman Dixon, we wouldn't want to block his path, but he was given his debut at Tottenham. He's only just signed his first pro contract. So I looked at Williams and the reason why we just looked at him was that he's 24 years of age and can do both of those roles. He's also can do a job in midfield if need be. I just thought he was an interesting one to have a little conversation about. Yeah, he certainly is. And he's, look, he's had an interesting career. He, he's almost done it backwards because he became known in the football world when he went straight into that Man United team at mm. quite a young age because obviously they, they needed the body in there and he came in and he did all right. He was obviously a kid at the time and then he went away and got his loan spells mm -hmm. and still played at a decent level but there was just zero pathway into that Man United team for him. The, the gap was too big, wasn't it? And they've been looking at options. They brought in full-back options over the last couple of years so it very much did block his pathway but he's a competent, capable player who's got good experience in the English leagues. You know, 98 games of football at 24 years old when mm -hmm. you, you've never been a guaranteed starter is quite impressive so he's got that experience and he just gives us that bit of cover that we feel like we need people might say that we've got all these options at right back but you look you look at those options you've got nathan patterson who has bad injury issues mm. seamus has had some injuries himself over mm. the last year and there's his age to worry about and you know his fitness to be able to play games Ashley Young, again, it's the age and, you know, you never know if he's going to pick up another suspension and he is also our left-back cover at the moment. And he's our only left-back cover. Mm. Brandon Williams would be cover for both sides and he would effectively be Ashley Young, but 15 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, again, listen, I get anyone who's saying, like, why would we get him? We understand it. We're just having a chat. He just looks like when you have a look at it, a player who Everton could possibly look at. Listen, we... 
as I started off saying, I don't expect Everton to to go in and get him. But like you just said, you're looking at options for that fullback position. He is quick. You know, we played his first season, 17 games for Manchester United in the Premier League, but he made 36 appearances overall that season for them. The next season, he made 14 appearances. Um, then he went the, on loan to Norwich City, played 26 times in the Premier League that season. Um, and then last season, sorry, 22-23, was back at United. They didn't there he had an injury, I think, that year, so didn't really do much. He only made one appearance. Then he went off to Ipswich last season and had fifteen games and two goals for them, played seventeen overall. Um ninety eight career games, like we've said, but he is he has got a bit of pace about him. He's right footed, that's my only thing. He is predominantly right footed player, he plays at left back. But that you know, that's his position. And when you're looking at an eight, I was looking at players like that, he's had He's had, you know, three different clubs, played in the Premier League with two different clubs and a, a little spell in the Championship. I always look at players of that age and think, if you've got him and he's in your squad, then he's not going to be big wages. And also, like you just said, he is a useful sort of player because he's a utility player. But you can also flip him. If he plays a few games and then you think, right, we're moving on from that, you could sell him again, you know what I mean? And, and, and certainly get your money back. Because yeah. uh, what I mean by that is you won't be paying for him but wages. But if you're looking to try and bring a bit of pace into the side as well, he's, he's definitely not slow. And would he be a better cover for Michalenko? I think a lot of people would probably say, yeah, I'd rather Brandon Williams cover Michalenko than Ashley Young. And Young then can just be the 15 minute sub with the experience which that, is what he which is be. what he really should be at his age anyway yeah because last year i think we probably relied on ashley young far too much because mm. he was covered for so many positions mm. and our squad is thin so we and ben godfrey's games. gone as well don't yeah and ben godfrey was also covered for mm. that role and the only sticking point for me which would be the reason not to sign him mm. assuming his wage request isn't you know as modest enough which i'm sure it would be is Roman Dixon at right back? You wouldn't mm. want to block his progression no, while he's at the club. No. So you would be bringing him in primarily as left back cover. Mm. But that's fine in itself because, like we say, we only have one out and out natural left back. Mm. He is right footed, like you say, but I think he's comfortable enough with both feet. Mm. And our full backs don't overlap anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it is one, it is an um, easy deal to do. We're probably the best club he could hope to get into because, yes. you know, he, he's been in the championship last year and wasn't a guaranteed starter. But bring him in, he's useful cover for us. And maybe in two years' time, he'd only be 26 and you can flip him mm. and get five million in mm. for him when you look to move again. But I think it just makes perfect sense. It's not exciting. It's not going to be the sign and that if we made it, it'd turn our fortunes around, no. but it had a missing piece to our squad that we are lacking currently. Bit of experience, bit of pace on the bench. Like you say, we haven't we haven't even got like a proper left back who's like in the seven who's seventeen, eighteen at the moment. So you go, he's you know, a few years ago we had we obviously all know Thierry Small left because he was he couldn't see a pathway and he only really had Luca Dean ahead of him, um, and he went. He couldn't really see, you know, where his pathway was. We haven't got that coming through at the moment. Doesn't mean there won't be one in two years, but just right now, it's not as if, like you just said, rightly so. On the other side, Roman Dixon is there and he's made his debut. He's been on the bench a few times. We don't have that at left back right now. Eli Campbell, who is predominantly a centre back, has played left back for the twenty ones because we haven't had a natural athlete at left back, you know, and. Again, I think this is where they see Samuel Smith. They were hoping he would fall into that. But, but again, he moved on. He went off he? to Chelsea and we've got Oden, but he's a right-back. His brother is, is essentially a right-back on the other side. So there is a bit of a gap on that left-hand side. He, he had experience, Premier League experience, I may add. Um, if you come into the squad, he was one. Like we just he, Out of the ones we've looked at, he seems a gettable, realistic one without breaking the bank for Everton Football Club. Yeah, you'd imagine it'd be easy to do, especially with uh, the free agent market is obviously still open, so you mm. can move for those yeah, players. Yeah. And, you know, amongst those players, th there are good players on there, but there are, there are ones you look at and go, that'd be difficult to do. And with his wages, this, that and the other, it's not necessarily an easy deal mm. to do. And he was the standout one for us, wasn't he? That you go, capable enough, Wages should be all right, and you know, he'd be happy coming in as a backup. He sort of fit that criteria more than the others, didn't he? 
definitely, I mean, we saw on that list, there's like Matt Hummels, but he's having a medical at Roma, apparently. Uh, Robert Scov was another one, but he's gone to Union Berlin, I think. Um, I, haven't I think he was at Hoffenheim, he's gone to Union Berlin. But there are, I mean, there are the standout ones when you look at the list still available. You've got Memphis Depay. Now, he would make Everton, I think he would improve Everton. Doesn't smack me as a Sean Dyche player. It can lead styles, yeah, clash, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think Everton will be moving for him. And he, I don't know what wages he'd want as well, but the fact is, Hello. it's September and he's not got a club, though. So, who knows? He has been running with weights on his back in Monaco, so there you go. But he's available just right now at the time of recording this. Anthony Martial, very Premier League experienced, has uh, left Manchester United. No idea what sort of wages he'd be looking at. He's on there. And we the other one's Rabio. Yeah, I mean, we can bring Martial in, sorry, just, just to interrupt you, just so he doesn't score. I was going to say, us. just simply to stop, yeah. us, stop him scoring against us, yeah. But um, Rabio, again, he's enough mm. one, isn't he? Where he's sort of exclusively played at the top level mm. and probably is still capable of doing that. He was in the France team mm. in, um, the Euros, in the Euros, of course. But I think just with the wages he'd want, he'd probably want security in his contract. And he would come here at that Yeah, a lot of the top teams are looking at, you know, younger, more permanent deals mm. to do as well. So he's sort of been priced out of that. But I think it'd take a lot for him to want to adjust to coming to a team like Everton. I think take a lot for Sean Dice to want him as well. He's he he's a bit hot and cold. Rabio on his day is brilliant, but you know if you if it they're the three standouts, aren't they? There's people like Joel Matip on there and Kayla Navas and those kind of players as well. But John you, Egan, another John one. John Egan, yeah. Well, he's he has obviously got a lot of experience in English football. There's Ben Yedder, but he's 33, 34 now. But out of the three we've just mentioned, there the pie Rabio and. Martial, if you could choose one of those three to come into Everton, this is which one would you go? They'd be happy to. Oh yeah, 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 no, yeah. No, We're playing a game. We the, don't. There's no. Don't you know? Not don't be start shout crying in the medical like no, New Amar. They won't be anything. crying in the medical because they get fours of guns to Everton or Fulham. Don't be shouting and screaming at the screen. This is just a little bit of fun. Just you know for. For clarity, to show you know, it's the international break. Just yeah. be happy you've got just, something just, entertaining. Just to be watch. with it. Yeah. But if you could pick one of those three, you personally, who you'd like to see with that Everton kit on this season, who would you pick? I think for me, it'd be the pie, yeah. just because he's he's the X factor. Isn't he? I think he'd annoy you as much as he'd lift you out your mm. seat, and mm. it's certainly not a Sean Dyche player, but. No. He has that ability, and the reason he's failed at the top level isn't for a lack of ability. He's obviously not just applied himself right over the years and not been willing to get stuck in, but he is a quality player. He's mm. got a bit of pace. He's a dangerous attacker. He was in the Holland team yeah, in the summer, even though he was without a club, so they obviously rate him really highly, and I don't know. It, it's one of them, isn't it? It'd be a massive risk, and he's sort of, there's alarm bells ringing off, but there is so much ability there if you get him going. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, he is does massively love himself. He's got the Al Memphis, there and he's got you know his little everything's um, tailored to him. But he is a very good footballer, and he's he's been named in the Netherlands squad this weekend, even though he has he hasn't got a club. And Stephen Bearwine, who very much has a club in Saudi Arabia, has been left out because Ronald Koeman said basically he's retired by going to Saudi and yet Memphis doesn't even have a club and he's in the Holland squad which tells you his ability but seeing him at Atletico scored some worldies for them as well and um, he would I think he would massively improve Everton of course he would but it's not going to happen but he would be a good one to get yeah. in and a free transfer and it will be dead interesting to see where he actually ends up this season yeah and you know maybe from a footballing perspective maybe hopefully the fact that you know the summer's been and gone and he still doesn't have a club. Surprise, maybe. Chelsea haven't bought him. Well, I mean, they are stockpiling wingers, aren't they? And stockpiling well, he plays, attackers. He plays through the middle, though, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, true. Play. But um, no, I think just hopefully from a football perspective, this is maybe the wake up call for the pie, and it can you know maybe help him think maybe I need to adjust myself because I don't have mm. that long left in my career and mm. I want to play at the best level possible. And, that, and hopefully he will find the club and he can find that form that he's sort of threatened to show through his career but never really committed to. Interesting. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. What about Brandon Williams? Would you would you touch it or would you just go with the squad Everton have got? And if you had to choose one of the three we mentioned, the other three, which one would you pick out of those three for Everton to sign? It's a bit of fun. 
just smile and enjoy it. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, you want to become a Toffee TV Premium member, links in the description, QR codes on the screen now, see you later.